This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition, as always. I do hope you're well. That little solo there was me having a bit of a noodle with the pentatonic box patterns up and down the neck. Uh, specifically, I was using a major pentatonic. Even more specifically, I was using G major pentatonic. And that is uh, sort of pertinent to today's question because today is Wednesday after all. And on a Wednesday, I deal with viewers' questions. And um, I got this one uh, in my inbox the other day uh, from someone called Tracy. Hello. John, thanks for all the content. You must be the hardest working guitarist on YouTube. Keep it up. I have a question for your viewers' questions Wednesday videos. What is the deal with the major pentatonic scale? I can't get my head round it. I know a couple of boxes for the minor pentatonic, and I've always been told that these are the same shapes for the major one. How does this work? How can a minor scale be a major scale as well? Every time I think I've got it, I get confused again. Thanks for your help, Trace. So, the vexed question of major pentatonic scales. It is something that... I don't know why, but it seems to get a lot of people scratching their heads in confusion. Um, just that they understand the concept of a minor pentatonic scale, uh, but when it comes to thinking of it as a major pentatonic, it is something that, that can cause problems for many people. So if that sounds like you, you are confused by the idea of um, the major and the relative minor or the minor and the relative major pentatonic identities, well, this is for you. Here's a bit of an explanation. Here is the explanation. Okay, here is hopefully what is a familiar looking pentatonic box pattern, and you can see that as well as showing where the notes are, I've shown what the notes are as well. Uh, basically the notes of E, G, A, B, D, and back to E again, as you ascend the scale, or just thinking of it as another way, just all of the notes of the open strings are the notes that make up that scale. Interestingly, um, there's a handy little mnemonic for remembering the notes in the scale, just rearrange the letters a little bit, and it spells the word badge so there you go anyway uh, if you stare at this pattern for long enough uh, you will start noticing that there are some chords you can see in there uh, there's an e minor chord that reveals itself if you uh, look for it and also you can see a g major chord in there as well let's go back to the e minor there it is and then there's the g major uh, and let's put both those chords side by side like that. Now, the point of this is that these are the only two chords which can be found within the pentatonic scale shown here. Hence, the scale is named after the chords which can be located within it. So the notes of E, G, A, B and D are referred to as the E minor and or G major pentatonic scale. That is is the relationship that exists within a pentatonic scale. It has one major identity based upon the major chord that can be found within it, and one minor identity based upon the minor chord that can be found within it. And the relationship that you've got here between the G root note of the G chord and the E root note of the uh, E minor chord is the uh, relationship that you get between um, major and minor pentatonics. The G major pentatonic will be 
the same thing as countdown one two three frets to e the e minor pentatonic or the e minor pentatonic will be the same thing as count up three frets one two three the g major pentatonic and you can apply that across all pentatonic scales every minor pentatonic is the same thing as the major pentatonic three frets above uh, and every with the root note three frets above i should say and every major pentatonic is the same thing as the minor pentatonic with a root note three frets below hopefully that makes sense so what this means is that as i was saying um this pattern here <laughs> which we've just been looking at is an E minor pentatonic or a G major pentatonic. It can be used in any um, situation, any song, any jam track, whatever, which has either a strong E minor tonality or a strong G major tonality. And we can then apply that to all the other box patterns of that scale. Um, so all you've got to remember for how the, the pentatonic boxes fit together is that the second note in one pattern becomes the first note in the next pattern. So this is an E minor or G major pentatonic. This is an E minor or G major pentatonic. Move up to the next pattern. This is also an E minor or G major pentatonic. As I say, the, uh, the second note in each pattern becomes the first note in the next pattern. And this is an E minor or G major pentatonic. And then, when we kind of do that thing again second note in this pattern becomes the first note in the next pattern we're back to that pattern again an octave above where we started and then you can just continue going up until you run out of frets um the the idea of an of a major or minor pentatonic isn't dependent upon which note you start on uh, it's handy to know where the root note is. It's handy to know where all the notes are um, in every scale along the neck, you know. And um, if there's one thing that you can do to make playing the guitar much, much, much easier, it's just learn the fretboard. But that's the topic for a, another video, I suspect. Um, but, you know, it is handy to know where the root notes are, but you don't have to start on an E note if you're using it as an E minor pentatonic. You don't have to start on a G note if you're using it as a G major pentatonic. All of those patterns that I've just run through there are E minor and or G major pentatonic. And you can transpose this quite easily into other keys. Let's say if I wanted to do it in another key, um, A minor, right? So all I've got to do, if you remember, the E minor pentatonic started on an E note with that pattern. So to find the minor pentatonic with that position one shape then just place that finger on the uh, a note so there's a like that and then all the patterns will kind of just slot together like lego bricks as you move up the neck um and you know a minor also has uh, an alter ego uh, a major pentatonic and in the same way as when we were doing it down here that note there the one that i'm that the open string is kind of giving us but let's m imagine i'm playing it with that finger that note there tells us the minor name of the scale this note here tells us the major name of the scale just apply that in in every other key so this note here is telling me that this is an a minor pentatonic this note here, what note is that? That's a C. That note is telling me that it's C major pentatonic. And what will define whether it's actually a major pentatonic or a minor pentatonic, in that case there, either A minor or C major, is the context in which you're using it. If you're playing, um, you know, that box pattern there, licks from that, over, for instance, a chord sequence that's going...
like that, where you've got a very strong A minor tonality, you can think all day long that you are playing C major pentatonic because you're starting on a C note, but the, uh, the, the, the listener is hearing A minor pentatonic. Likewise, you know, you could have a chord sequence which is going something like this. Like that, where you've got a very strong C major tonality. And you might think, I'm playing A minor pentatonic because I'm starting on an A note. No, the listener is hearing C major pentatonic. It's about the context in which the scale is being used. But that is essentially how major and minor pentatonics relate to each other and how to locate them on the neck. So now you know what's going on. Go away and have some fun with it. So there you go. Uh, quite simple, really, isn't it? As always, you will find a full tab for that little solo at the beginning of the video in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing it, uh, a jam track for you to play along with for yourself, and that explanation clip you've just seen there. All of that is, as usual, up on my Patreon page. There's the address, and the link is in the description, as I'm sure you know by now, if you're a regular viewer. $3 or £2.50 a month gets you access to all of these additional goodies that go along with these YouTube videos. A massive, massive thank you to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways, all of which are linked down below in the description. Uh, as I say, on Wednesdays I deal with viewers' questions, so if you have anything of a guitar or music-related nature that uh, is causing you to kind of um, furrow your brow and scratch your head in a little bit of befuddlement, then get in touch. You can uh, find the uh, the email form on my website you can see the address on the screen there the link is in the description or you can just get in touch via uh, my email address jrguitartuition at gmail.com or you can leave a comment below this or any of my other videos and uh, who knows your question may just feature in one of these Wednesday slots but that is pretty much it for today folks hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful informative entertaining enlightening maybe in some way and if that's the case please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so and why not drop me a like as well while you're at it every, every little helps with the algorithm as they say um, but that is it for today folks uh, don't forget the live stream every Friday 5pm UK time we drink beer and talk about music and guitars great way to kick off the weekend i'd love to see you there if you can make it but for now i'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching thank you for your time look after yourselves folks stay well stay safe and above all stay sane bye for now